Hi guys, and welcome to part one of our talk about the next phylum or grouping of animals, the Nidarians. Nidaria is a group of, of animals that includes the corals, the jellyfish, the, um, the anemones, and, and hydroids. So we're going to be talking about these things. They all have one thing and a couple of things in common, but one major thing in common. They all have these special structures called stinging cells or nematocysts that we're going to get to. The CNID, NID, refers to stinging nettle. Um, if you've ever been out in the woods, you see those green plants that have those little tiny uh, needle-like things on them. And if you touch them, they really hurt for a little while, and then it kind of goes away. Those are stinging nettles. So these animals all have these stinging cells. They are all soft-bodied. Like I said, they all have these stinging cells called nematocysts. Um, they are all aquatic, so they all live in water. There are freshwater as well as uh, marine. Most of them are marine, but there are a bunch of freshwater ones. They all have radial symmetry. If you remember, we talked about symmetry, and we said that symmetry was the ability to um, cut something and have mirror images. So if I cut it like a pizza, no matter which way I cut it, it it's the same on either side, mirror images on either side. That's radial symmetry. Okay, so, so they all have radial symmetry. Um, some of them have an exoskeleton of, of calcium carbonate, or some of them are chitin. Um, it's a kind of protein type stuff that, that forms this hard skeleton. Um, we'll get to those in a few minutes. They're fairly simple. Uh, they don't have an excretory or respiratory systems. They don't have a brain. They don't have, um, you know, uh, nervous systems, although they do have a nerve net. We'll get to there. Um, but, but so they're considered carnivores. Um, they, like I said, they don't have a centralized nervous system. They don't have a brain. And and one of the major characteristics is there are two major forms of nidaria. And this is really important. I want you to kind of make sure you understand that there are two forms, the polyp and the medusa. The polyp is, is sessile. It doesn't move. It looks like this. This is a polyp. This happens to be an orange cup coral that I took in in um, Bonaire, um, and and you could see that it has it's stalked, and then it has these tentacles up at the top, okay. And and so it stays put where it is, okay. It doesn't really move around. That's a polyp. The medusa. If you take this thing and take away the the stalk. And flip it upside down, you get this is the Medusa. I took this picture in Rhode Island. This is Sienna capillata, the lion's mane jellyfish. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But what I want you to kind of understand is there are two major body forms. There's a polyp and there's a Medusa. And they're fairly simple. On the outside is an epidermis. On both of them, the outside is the epidermis. Okay. And then there's this jelly like stuff in the middle. Okay. And the jelly like stuff, you can't really see it in this one, is the mesoglia. So they have, they're, they're kind of jelly like, hence jellyfish, right? And then on the inside is a, a layer called the gastrodermis. Now, one of the interesting things is these guys don't have um, a digestive system per se. It doesn't go all the way through from mouth to anus. Uh, it, if you look right here, here is the mouth. It's also the anus. So mouth slash anus. What happens is these guys are considered carnivores because what they do is they use their stinging cells to capture prey and um, and then they 
they stuff it down into their mouth here. It goes into the gastrovascular cavity that, that's surrounded by the gastrodermis, and they digest the, the food. And then what happens is they excrete the wastes through this same opening. So their mouth is their anus. Kind of interesting critters. Okay? So, um, oh, we just said this, so I just want you to kind of make sure you get this. The internal space is the gastrovascular cavity. Gastro means stomach. Okay? So gastrovascular cavity is where the digestion takes place. There are three body, three layers. There's, there's the outside. That's the epidermis. The middle is the mesoglia. That is not living tissue. That, that is not living tissue. That is, um, a jelly-like, um, material. So non-living. Okay. This is cellular on the outside. This is cellular on the inside. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna instead of not living, I'm gonna say not cellu non cellular. It's because it's, it's part of a living organism. It's non cellular. Okay. So so those are the three layers. We'll we'll get to them in a bit. Okay. So as far as reproduction goes, they do both sexual and asexual reproduction. They can bud, um, which means they just grow a little one off the side, or they can produce sperm or eggs. Um, let, let's talk about the jellyfish life cycle for a minute. So there are some, I mean, there, there's, there, it's pretty straight, well, it's, it's pretty interesting. They go through these two body forms, most of them go through these two body forms. And the major um, body form, the one that you think about when you think about the, the kind of critter, is de will determine the class it's in for the most part. So, so there's a jellyfish-like stage, okay? And we call that the medusa. Okay. And... So there are there are male and there are female jellyfish. Medusa tends to be male or female. Okay. The males produce oh boy. Okay, let's see if I can do this. The males produce sperm. And the females, let me make my little spermy tails here. So the males produce sperm. The females produce an egg. Uh, let's see how we do this. So the the males produce the sperm. Oh, ah. Bad me. The females produce the egg. The sperm and the egg come together. Oh, let me redo that. Sperm and the egg come together. And when the sperm fertilizes the egg, you get a zygote. Okay? Um, the zygote, that's not good. Hold on. The zygote forms this little swimming larva called a planula larva. So this I'm going to write here. Plan Oop. Would be helpful. And the planula larva is this little ciliated swimming little thing, okay? 
And then what happens is the planula larva, when it finds a good place to settle down, will settle down and form a, 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 a young polyp called a scyphostoma. So let me, let me draw one. Not bad for Fusco. Okay, so the oh, let me rewrite it. This forms a oh, a structure or a, a critter, a stage called the scyphostoma. Okay, the scyphostoma matures. Oh, let's. We do this. The scyphostoma matures, and what happens is, hmm, let's see if I could draw this. Um, it kind of looks like a little pine cone. So it's got this base, and then it's got all these little. These little guys on it. So this this is called the the strobula. Okay, and so as this matures, it it starts to bud off these little things that are little baby jellyfish. That's not bad for Fusco. Called Ephyra. Okay. As the Ephyra mature, they become the Medusa. So let's let's take this a step at a time here. So we've got Medusa that produce sperm or egg. The sperm fertilizes the egg and forms a planula larva. The planula larva then, when it settles down and begins to mature, it becomes a, an immature polyp. The polyp, as it matures, starts to produce these buds that are attached to it. And, and as these bud off, they come off of the strobula and they become a free swimming baby medusa if you want to think about it like that the baby medusa is it, it develops into the adult medusa now the, here's the interesting thing this whole thing is called an alternation of generations Which makes these guys kind of, as far as I'm concerned, pretty interesting. This alternation of generation means that it goes from a sexually reproducing organism, so you need a mom and a dad, right, that produce sperm and egg, to this form that is asexual. Because what happens is it will bud off the baby Medusa, which... um which is asexual. So they, you know, the, the strobula is asexual. The ephyra are young medusa, which are sexual. That's, I think that's pretty cool. So it's kind of important that you understand this, this alternation of generations goes from a medusa to a polyp to a medusa to a polyp. And the medusa is sexually reproducing. The polyp is asexual. So they call that alternation of generations.
Okay. The the one thing that I said that they all have is is they all have these things called nematocysts. Nematocysts are are um, stinging. They're, they're they're parts of the stinging cell. They're the part that's coiled up inside of a cell, and and it's kind of like a sock inside out, and and so they're hollow, and as they extend, they there's a bulb at the back end. I'm going to show you in a second. There's a bulb at the at the back end, and it pumps the poison into into the 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 prey or the if it's trying to be defensive into the the organism that's attacking it. Um, the nematocysts are usually concentrated on the tentacles, um, but sometimes they're all over. Um, the tentacles push food into the mouth and into the gastrovascular cavity, like I said before. But this is this is ooh, come on. This is what the nematocyst looks like. It's a there's an, an um, it's a stinging cell with a nucleus and the stuff that you think about as a normal um, cell. And then inside is this capsule, and it has this this trigger. It has a lid. There's there's actually a lid here, and what happens is if something touches this trigger, and sometimes it's chemical and sometimes it's it's tactile, you know, touch. But when something forms forces this trigger to activate, the lid pops open and this comes flying out, and it's got barbs and it turns itself inside out. So what happens is as it pierces through the the prey, it turns inside out, so kind of like to to hold on, which is pretty impressive. So let me show you what these things look like underneath a microscope. Oop, oop, that's not what I want to do. Let me show you what these things look like under the microscope. Um, it's going to force me to do this, isn't it? Okay. So this is a um, this is a, a picture of the Portuguese man of war nematocysts in its tentacle and what you're looking at here is pretty cool this is the nematocyst Oop, let me do it. so this is the a nematocyst and if you look at here's this all coiled up piece that's the the um the nematocysts stinging the stinging part of the nematocyst and what happens is when something touches the trigger this comes flying out Come on. And it looks like this under the microscope. So this is the bulb that has the oh, that has the poison. Uh, this is the bulb that has the poison. This is the the thread that has the that transfers the poison. Here's another one. Okay. This is from a a, a hydra, another kind of uh, nidarian. Okay. So um, that's where I'm going to stop for, for part one. Tomorrow, or I'm sorry, next class, we'll pick up with the different classes or groups of Nidaria, which I think are one of my favorite groups of animals. They're, they're just really cool. So um, I will see you next class. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.